Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to read again with Thousand Monkeys. Being a translator poet, I've translated this book of poems by Alfonso Reyes, a Mexican. Uh, they're all very different. This one is called Cuento Aleman, German Tale. It was the hour the cat performs its bacon-grabbing spring, when across every window pane fine gold is glittering, the hour the magus of the moon goes out adventuring, in every bottle, jug and flask, the wine was heard to sing. It sang among the flushes of the ample-bellied butts that belch and snore and dream of being emptied of their guts by the nocturnal scullion of the kitchens of the king, the dread of every kitchen maid and dainty little thing. It sang the way the wild wind sings in the banners at the gate, while yokels take their beauty sleep and poets watch and wait. All in her dreams the princess heard the wine's alluring chants. All in her dreams she yielded to the pleasures of the dance. She had a base bone chaperone of very low degree, who dreamed it's fairly normal she was on a drunken spree. The king's a man of honour, a discreet and upright king. The king, he dreams of nothing, for he doesn't hear a thing. The king had grown a golden fleece that hung beneath his chin. Perhaps he kept a golden wine to marinade it in. This was his wisest counsel. This consoled him last and first, to swig whenever possible a bottle of the worst. The cat has pinched the bacon, and towards the moon it's gone, soars up and drinks the little wisps of moonbeam one by one. For flying is a special skill of all the feline band, provided that good fortune and the full moon lend a hand. The royal park was all the while enraptured with the moon, who took her time, enjoyed herself, and bathed in the lagoon. Oh ho, my little pixie man, be waiting, sir, stand by. Tell me, is that a flying cat that soars across the sky? Oh ho, my little elf, and would you rouse me? Can't you tell? It's the devil haunts and harries us, the devil come from hell. Protect us, little pixie man. He knew the whole affair. His beard grew long, and longer still when spring was in the air. The daybreak from her scabbard drew her golden sticker snee. Loud crowed the golden cockerel in the minster sacristy. The princess woke and rubbed her eyes, worn out from her contortions. The chaperone from bibulous and stertorous exertions. The king's a man of honour, a discreet and upright king. The king, the king knows nothing, for he doesn't know a thing. The folk who saunter in the square to view the clock, they say it was the flying Dutchman Puss in Boots who passed this way. He went about the town at night and drained the bottles dry. He emptied all the demijohns and made the maidens cry. And following the custom in the tavern sat a sipping of his wine with modest quantities of bacon, cheese and dripping. The princess was delivered of a very ugly cat. The chaperone was negligent. She took the blame for that. The king, a noble-hearted and sagacious man of state, continued with his breakfast and completely cleared his plate. He supped his mild and bitter ale and sucked his whiskered septum and ate his meal in silence. Not a single word escaped him. And there's no doubt about it that between himself and he, the king had not one thought at all. No comment. Let it be. Here's wishing you the best of health, the greatest good fortune, and keep your daughters locked away from the magus of the moon. Four monks composed these verses, and they all were goliards. They lived the life of vagrants, though their families were wealthy, disciples of John Dunsey's, acolytes of Abelard's, though none of them was maimed or squinty-eyed or that unhealthy. They had a gross of drinking vats, a cubic chain of tons, and four tomato faces, like a clutch of scarlet suns. <laughs>